Welcome to Rural Health Pulse. I'm Jim Kinnear, Chief Human Resources Officer at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. In this series, we focus on ideas and stories impacting the health of our region and explore the programs and initiatives designed to improve health care and wellness. This podcast is a collaborative effort of IRMC and Indiana University of Pennsylvania. In this episode, the focus is on the new Kopchik Hall being constructed on the campus of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Once completed, the more than 152,000 square foot facility will be the hub of activity for all things science and math at IUP. Our guest is Dr. Stephen Hoven, Interim Dean for the Kopchik College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, who will discuss the construction process and its anticipated impact for the educational and research opportunities. Dr. Hoven, welcome to our podcast. Happy to have you here today. I'm glad to be here, Jim. Just to get started, would you uh, share a little bit about your background, what brought you to IUP and your current role? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I actually started a long time ago at IUP, back in the mid-90s, as a faculty member in the geosciences. I spent uh, a number of years teaching my classes and doing my research and then uh, slowly got migrating myself into the, the, the administrative role. So I spent 14 years as the department chair as well. And then a couple of years ago, I left for a position that uh, I'm loaner to the National Science Foundation. I spent two years, mostly during COVID there, until I uh, had the opportunity to return to IUP as the interim dean of the Kopchik College. Uh, our previous dean had retired uh, after 10 years of serving in that role, and they asked me to return for two years, and now I'm currently sitting in my second year of that interim role. Wow, that's exciting to, to be back and so to come back at such an interesting time for yeah, the college. It definitely it is. Yes, thanks. So today, one of the things we want to talk a little bit about is the new uh, Kopchak Hall. Just to start off, I, I understand the Kopchak Hall was made possible due to a significant gift made to IUP. Could you share a little background uh, regarding that with our listeners? Sure. The, the namesake of the, the Kopchik Hall is, is from uh, John and Char Kopchik, who were uh, 1970s graduates of IUP. John is a biology student who uh, made his, his, um, his name in pharmaceuticals, uh, developing a growth hormone uh, drug therapy. And um, uh, he wanted, when he came back to IUP, to... Uh, help guide our college, uh, part of our advisory board. He uh, he made a very significant commitment to the new building and and uh, um, the largest single donation ever to a state system school in Pashi. So he uh, he and his family have given twenty three million dollars towards the building, and therefore we're very proud to name it after him. Oh, wow, what a, what an incredible gift to to IUP and to the community. And I understand that. You know, in addition to that extraordinary gift, there's also been other contributors and donors that are helping to advance this project as well. Yeah, there have. There, um, the, the vision of our college, mostly through the help of John and, and several other of our advancement uh, council members, uh, we put together a vision that said, we change lives through science and math, and our graduates change the world as educators, scientists, and researchers. And and I think out of that vision really came from the folks that have been so generous towards our college, not only just John and Char, who, who clearly not only have changed, we've changed their lives through their science education at IUP, but they're now changing the lives of our students for generations to come. But I think several others from our Advancement Council also felt like that was an opportunity they, they wanted to partake in. And so Tim and Deb Saika, um, Tim was a 1970s graduate of the geoscience department, my old department at IUP. Um, he he uh, returned, he and his wife met at, at IUP, and they returned to work with IUP. He's now a member of our board of trustees. They made a very significant donation, and we're proud to name the planetarium after the Tim and Deb Saika. Uh, we've also had other contributors, uh, mostly naming rights for uh, departments or some lab spaces. Probably the largest one is Bill and Audrey Media, uh, chemistry uh, graduates. Um, Bill Media went on to serve in the military and and uh, um, developed a, a, a quite a, a an extensive understanding of nuclear chemistry. Um, after that, served with the University of Stanford and has uh, um, made a. a a significant contribution to the, the, the building from that as well. So. 
Well, that's fantastic to hear all these contributions and how so many alumni have contributed to this vision of the new science hall. Now, as an undergrad, I had my science classes over in Wyatt Hall, and that was a long time ago. Um, can you give us a sense of a little bit about the new science hall and what will it look like and what will it include? Yeah. I'll, so I, as I said, I've been here from the, the mid-90s on, and most of my, my professional career was, was spent in that science building. My research labs, most of my classes were taught over there. Um, and we love that building, but it is definitely dated. The hallways are are narrow. There's not a lot of places for students to hang out. There's not a lot of vision to see what's happening in the science labs themselves. My wife will tell you the story that uh, she was also a graduate of IUP, and when she took her science classes, she said she would get a little shiver down her back because it would have these strange smells and sounds coming from the hallways. And and even when she'd come to visit me in the, the science building now, she'd still get that same shiver. So, so our new science building, what we were trying to do is to erase that kind of science building. It worked for the 1960s and it's and it certainly has provided a a nice home for research and science on campus but but a new modern science building that that opens up what science is to the every everyday average person both the science students and the non-science students that are in our building. We wanted a building that really was welcoming that served really as the heart of science on campus and with lots of visibility and opportunities to share science both through the building itself, but also into the, the, the classes. So it's a, it's a completely different kind of building. It's going to be a very comfortable place for students to interact. Students and faculty interact, faculty and faculty to interact. The, the lab spaces will be a different modality than what we've had before. In the traditional science buildings, biologists are in one part of the science building, chemists are in a different part, and physicists are in a different part, and geoscientists are in a different part. Usually they stick the geoscientists in the basement because we have these big bulky rock collections. But in the new building, we've designed the labs to be much more interactive. And so we don't have single lab spaces for one discipline or another. We have interdisciplinary research clusters. And so research labs will, will be comprised of faculty that are interested in environmental science and whether they be chemists or biologists or geologists. And There'll be other spaces that'll be more for biomedical sciences, whether they're biochemistry or biology or physicists. So we're really kind of excited about the opportunities that'll give us in the new space to, to not only change the way people see science being done on campus, but to, to, to also change the way science itself is done in a much more modern, much more interdisciplinary, much more um, 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 interactive with an, a, a wide discipline group. So as you describe that, can hear just the differences in teaching and learning in that new environment. How do you think students will benefit from this more open and interdisciplinary environment? I think that's probably where we're going to see the, the initial impact of this new building is through the students. And, and I'm hoping that students will find science to be less fierce, fearful. Um, We've, we've often referred to non-science students as sometimes being science phobic, and I think that phobia comes from just not really understanding how it applies to themselves and why it's interesting. And the new space, I think, from the hallways to the classrooms to the research labs are really going to try and provide that explanation for why science is important to everybody. And so I think our students are, are, are first and foremost going to benefit from the, the inner active and interrelated science disciplines that are going on there. And as you describe that, just one of the things I think you've said, but just to call out, this isn't just benefiting science majors. It really is going to impact all students because most students take some science classes as part of their general studies. So yeah. definitely a big impact. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all the students uh, on campus, whether they're scientists or not, will take, as you said, a, a, a general studies or what we refer to as liberal studies science courses here. And one of those for certain, will be a liberal studies science elective with a lab. And so they'll be in the new building. They'll be seeing the new space and working in the new spaces. It's, a, it's an exciting time to be on, on campus as a scientist. I really do think that this new building will, will define the, the lifeblood of the scientific community, whether you're directly connected to that lifeblood as a scientist or whether you're, you're one of the, the farther out digits uh, attached to that lifeblood somewhere else.
you've mentioned a few of the features, but can you tell us more about some of the particular features and areas in the new science building? Yeah, so I think probably the most obvious feature when, when you first walk into this building is, is that we'll have a large atrium space that will serve as the meeting place for science on campus. So we have uh, a, a large number of very comfortable seats for students to hang out, to study in, to to have lunch in. We'll have some booth seating, some table seating, some places for you to meet your professors, some places for the professors to meet each other. And I, I think that that's going to, going to be a, a space that, that, that follows the entire central atrium of the building from the ground level all the way up. And so every floor has places for people to just hang out informally, learn about science, learn from each other. But then the the, the other differences that you'll see in the building is that, that the, we wanted to, to make sure that science was transparent and that people could see science happening even when it's behind a laboratory um, environment. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of open windows in the, into the, the science labs. We have a passageway through our environmental engineering lab with a very large window that you can see everything that's going on in there. Our scanning electron microscope lab we don't have a window into it, but we've got an electronic window into it. We'll have a feed directly from the scanning electron microscope into the, a digital display outside so you can see exactly what the, the scientists are seeing when it's uh, under operation. So it's really going to be exciting to, to do. The building itself will actually just be a tool to learn about science and sustainability, too. Um, we're going to have the building monitored for its uh, uh, utilities, and students can see the graphs of of how electricity usage goes up and down throughout the day or water usage changes throughout the day and and how in the winter time it changes and the summertime it changes and any efforts to to reduce consumption of electricity should be able to be seen and, and recorded in those those display monitors. It's really impressive to hear the amount of detail and things that have been considered in this design process of bringing those together and it just sounds like a very immersive learning environment yeah. as well. How did you approach the design process and how did all those ideas come together? So that, that's a really great question. The, it started probably 15 years before it ever broke ground and we knew at some point we'd, we would be building a new building. Um, it, like most things, gets delayed by budgetary constraints and gets put back a couple of years but um, we didn't think it would be 15 years before we broke ground but, but we did want to be prepared when we were ready to break ground to have the building that fit the needs of the current faculty, the students, and the vision that we had for what sciences was going to be on campus. And so a large number of faculty, uh, some students and some facilities folks on campus would start to meet and with the help of a program called Project Kaleidoscope that was funded by the National Science Foundation, we had meetings in DC and some other universities to get together with architects who specifically built science buildings. and. Would, would share with us ideas about what we needed to consider and how we needed to get buy-in from the different communities that would be using the building. And so we started the groundwork a long time before the building ever was, even before an architect was selected. And so we had a pretty good idea of what we wanted in the building. And then when we hired the architects, we were able to share that with them and, and I think gave us a, 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 a perfect design for what we wanted out of the building. Thanks for sharing that. And it's so impressive to think about the depth of thought and time and energy that has gone into creating this vision and then bringing it to life. Just curious, is there a particular feature of the new hall that you're personally most excited about? You know, it's hard to pick. Um, I, I do think that that atrium space where where people will congregate is is one of my favorite features of the building. Um, We've never had that. So we've, if you go to Wyant Hall right now, you'll find we've got a couple of places where we'll be able to stuff some chairs for students to hang out. But most of the hallways, if students are waiting for a classroom, they're sitting on the, on the floor right next to the lab waiting for it to open. And not only does it look uncomfortable, it doesn't make it easy to, to sit around and, and enjoy the science or share the science that you've learned in class or in, in the labs. And, and so this, I think that new space, that atrium space, that informal casual learning space is really one of the things I'm most excited about. So one of the other places in the new building I'm really kind of excited about is the the, the, the Psyche Planetarium. The, 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 we have an, a planetarium in the old building. It it's, it's functions really nicely. It's a, a mechanical projector that our 
our science education coordinator will provide lots of public planetarium shows, and it's really useful. It's a very good, old-fashioned model of planetarium. The new planetarium will be a completely digital projection screen. And so that will give us the ability to not only provide planetarium shows about the solar system and about our galaxy or about the sun, but anything that can be displayed digitally can be portrayed in that planetarium in a way that that I, I kind of see this as being an opportunity for simulations of, of teachers who want to experience what it's like to teach in a very loud classroom or, or nurses to interact with patients in a very busy operating space. And, and so I think the opportunities for the planetarium will really change the way the community interacts with the science building too. And so we'll, we'll see people coming in to, to see shows that we've never even thought we could show in a planetarium before. And so I'm kind of excited about that. But beyond that, I, I, the idea that we, we no longer have dedicated individual scientific research labs, but instead have focused on interdisciplinary scientific clusters where faculty from different departments will cross paths just by the fact that they're working in a, 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 a laboratory complex, an interdisciplinary lab cl complex, I think that's really kind of exciting is that, that it's easy to get into your own silo of, of specialty or discipline and this will force all of us to interact a lot more than we've ever done before. And I think good things come from that kind of interaction. I think it's the future of science, and and uh, and I, I think it's situating IUP's Kopchik College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics for the future of, of what science should look like. When you describe that interaction and opportunities for collaboration, you know, it comes to mind that that's a really rich environment for innovation. And on that, you know, how do you see research and innovation advancing because of the new science cell? You know, I'm not sure. I, I, I think part of that's going to be organic. I think as we, we interact uh, and we share ideas and, and thoughts and start seeing our scientific projects from somebody else's point of view or they start asking you questions about your science from their point of view, those kinds of, of ideas grow. And that's one of the things I think we're doing. We're setting the, the, the space for those kinds of collaborations to develop. Some of them are, are there already, and I think they're going to benefit from those. Biochemistry and biomedical research is one of those for, for sure that, that, that I think will benefit from the, the new spaces in the building. But, but then I think there's, there's lots of them that we have a number of, of ecologists that are working on various biology projects that would benefit tremendously from interacting with the geoscientists or the regional planners or, or the chemists. And so I think there's going to be lots of those new developments and new ideas sharing, and I'm hoping that we can start to see the, the, the kinds of research proposals increase from those kinds of interdisciplinary interactions then. This particular podcast series focuses on rural health issues. How do you think... Um, Kopchak Hall and the new facilities for science and math can help benefit some of the workforce challenges and also just in general health care challenges in, in rural Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I think that's, Jim, that's really going to be a, an important aspect of the new building is not that our old building doesn't have quality research spaces, but it won't have the kind of quality that the new building will offer. We're, we'll have labs with safety standards, standards that are much higher than what we have right now we'll have more of those kinds of lab spaces. And so some of the, the limits that we have in the old building are related to having only one type of biosafety laboratory space. And, and so it's hard to, you have to watch out for cross-contamination of, of, of research in there. To have dedicated space that we can put one type of research there and not worry about the cross-contamination um, and, and, and uh, isolate that will we'll open up new opportunities that we don't have in the existing building. But I also think that, that the, especially when, it, when I think about the biology and biochemistry research, I think the, the, the goal is really to find space that, that, that allows us to advance the research capacity at IUP. And, and as those new collaborations develop and, and, and discussions about what equipment are necessary to, to make those collaborations successful, we plan on putting our commitment towards the the purchase of the equipment that's needed to do that. So, so I, I see this as really being a transformative time at IUP, and especially in terms of, of sciences in general. 
Sounds very exciting. Just to recap, can you tell us a little bit about when the hall is expected to open? Yeah, we right now we're scheduled to move in sometime around August or September of next year. So August, September of 2023. We were hoping to move in a little bit sooner because if you know about the academic schedule, that's just about the time classes start. And so we had to make a decision that we probably will still hold classes in the fall term of 2023 in Wyatt Hall. We couldn't ask faculty to pack up those labs and hope that we got in by the time the start of classes was. So we, we decided to just make the, the, the plan to move in at the end of the fall term. So anybody that has a science class will probably be in Wyatt Hall next fall. Anybody who has a science class in the spring will be in the new Kopchik Hall. We're hoping to maybe move in portions of, of the, the college, maybe the department offices and faculty offices, maybe some research labs um, that don't require chemicals or chemical support. Um, but uh, the majority of the opening, the grand opening, will really be at the end of the fall when we, we start classes in the new building. So about a year from now, you'll, yeah. you'll be well into your new space and Kopchik Hall will be filled with students and faculty. Yep, and I can't wait. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Just curious, and, and you might not know the answer to this at this point, are there any plans for the space currently occupied by Wyant Hall? So as soon as we move out of Wyant Hall, um, they'll begin the demolition of, of, of that space. Uh, so it'll get fenced off, and uh, at the moment, the plans are to... to tear down Wyant Hall and turn it into green space. We do have uh, a goal of putting up at least a small structure in that green space, a, um, a greenhouse uh, for our biological research. Uh, but other than that, it's really just going to be green space for part of the Oak Grove. Thanks for sharing that. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and, and giving us some insights into the development of the Kopchak Hall and all the work that's being done to bring it to a vision from to reality. It's been my pleasure, Jim. Thank you. Advancing educational and technological facilities in science and mathematics at IUP will create opportunities to foster public health research and workforce development efforts that will impact our region and beyond. Rural Health Pulse is a collaborative effort of the Indiana Regional Medical Center, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and the Indiana community. It is produced by Chris Korn from IUP's Division of University Advancement and recorded by the IUP Communications Media. I'm Jim Kinnear. Thank you for listening and be sure to watch for future episodes of Rural Health Pulse.